On October 25, 1995, my wife and I started a Bible study on the side of the road under a lean-to. We did this because we were not able to find a building to rent. As a result of this Bible study, today there is a church in Abidjan Ivory Coast. Some of the folks who started with us are now in heaven. A few months after starting this Bible study, we were able to find a building. We are in that building today. Through following what the Bible says in Acts 14 verses 21 through 28, we were able to disciple many, many, many of these folks through preaching, teaching, confirming, exhorting, and discipling the ones we led to Christ. Today, there is a lay pastor who has been directing the church since 2002. In spite of political instability, civil unrest, and high unemployment, the church continues to this day as an autonomous church. On May 21, 2010, we had a commending service where we commended them, them to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are now self-supporting, self-propagating, self-governing. They are also supporting five national missionaries at $30 a month. This church is a result of the prayers and support of people like you. We'd like to thank you for partnering with us and working with us for the last 15 years in this ministry. I really believe what we need today in missions is a pioneer spirit. The Lord said to go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And while it's true there are unreached people all over the world, the greatest number of them live in what we call the 1040 window. And that's the part of the world between 10 degrees and 40 degrees north latitude. But you must think North Africa, the Middle East, Asia. We call it sometimes the resistance belt because it's the home of Islam, Buddhism, Shintoism, Hinduism. The greatest unreached people groups of the world are there. Most Muslims live there. Uh, the great unreached countries like Japan, Mongolia, and China, and Indonesia, India, Pakistan, Southeast Asia. 4.4 billion people live in that part of the world. St. Louis, Senegal is where we work. St. Louis, Senegal is the door by which Islam penetrated Sub-Saharan West Africa. Senegal, however, despite being 95% Muslim, permits missionaries to evangelize in this country. We work with the Wolof people. The Wolof people are one of the most resistant people groups on the planet. Less than 0.01% of the Wolof population has adhered to the gospel. Among our independent Baptist churches, there is just a handful of independent Baptist missionaries in Senegal. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because it's very, very difficult. Our prayer and our heart's desire is God would stir the hearts of people all over this country and the world to go to that vast area. Two thirds of the world's people live in the 1041. Yet about 2% of, of the giving to missions goes to that area. What is the religious climate like where we live? Within a quarter mile of our house, there are over eight mosques, not including Quranic schools. The Muslims in St. Louis, Senegal are very, very devoted. They're very dedicated. On Thursday nights, many, many times, they're up until two, three o'clock in the morning, just simply saying the name of Allah. They're a very devoted people. They're religious, but lost. The phrase, God does not have a son, is just repeated over and over and over and over again. Our burden is to share the good news that he does have a son. And it's our burden to give them that good news. The Islam that you find here in Senegal, West Africa, is not the same as the Islam 
in the Middle East. The Islam here is a folk Islam mixed with traditions and animism. And it is this folk Islam that has contributed to the resistance of the gospel. When I consider the Great Commission, I am reminded of the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ has commanded us to go into all the world with the gospel. He has commanded the local church to not only reach our Jerusalem, but to reach the outlying areas, to reach the other continents of this world, all at the same time. Probably it was not until September 11th, 2001, that many Americans really became aware of this large group of people. One out of every four people on planet Earth are Muslim, following a religion that came along some 700 years after Christ, a religion that denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And yet the Russells are going to people steeped in this belief system, going to them with love and compassion and sharing with them the truth of the eternality of Christ, the love of God, and the plan of redemption through the cross of Calvary. What does our ministry consist of here in Senegal, West Africa? Well, first of all, we have a reading room, which has been in existence since 1977. Through this reading room, we are able to do a low-key evangelism, which has been very effective. People check out books. After reading many of these books, they ask very pointed questions, and we're able to give them the gospel. We also have a missionary from Japan named Hiroko Matsumoto, who shares the gospel with street children and has a Sunday school class. We have services on a weekly basis, three services a week. Sunday morning services, we're trying to have that in Wolof. So we covet your prayers that we'd be able to learn the Wolof language. Since October 2007, we've also been ministering in the prison on a weekly basis. And the gospel is going out on a daily basis from here in St. Louis, Senegal. In order for us to be fully effective, when we return to the field in June of 2011, it will be necessary for us to make up the 30% of support which we don't have at this time. Our goal, this furlough, is to raise awareness for Senegal and for the 1040 window. There are limitless opportunities here in Senegal, West Africa, not just to reach the ethnic groups here, but St. Louis being strategically located right on the border of Mauritania gives us a gateway into North Africa. That's why you're thankful that God would call a family like the Russells, that they would take the time to learn the languages, to assimilate into the culture, and to have a God-given burden for people who are so unlike us and who have such little interest in the gospel of Christ. May we do everything we can to get the gospel to the regions beyond until Jesus Christ comes again. What a blessing it has been to serve the Lord here in Senegal, West Africa since 2006. We are doing our part serving the Lord here in Senegal, West Africa. But only through the commitment of local churches like yours will the cause of Christ continue.